Hi everybody, Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you've watched my review earlier today, today it's still Monday, the 11th of November 2019, uh, you'll see that I did a review of the Meng uh, book, and um, I told you just to get away from the Russian stuff, I'll do a review for you about something that's English. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking the lighting's a bit weird, I'm really sorry, it's because these boxes are glossy. So I've got the light here to my right hand side, so the light is actually panning across, so on here is shadows as you can see. So, um, this is going to be a review of Hobby Boss 135th scale Land Rover Defender. Um, all of the Land Rover Defenders that Hobby Boss have done have all been based on a long wheelbase. Uh, Land Rover 110 as we know them, um, even though I think they're actually 109 or 107. Um, the same as the short wheelbase, we call it a 90, it's actually 93 inch wheelbase. A lot of talk about these kits when they first came out. They've been around now for quite a few years. Um, there, there is inaccuracies, some dafty little things that are easily changed. There's nothing like major shape issues or anything from what I can gather, but there are some silly little things. Now, I've read up a little bit today, um, to be honest I forgot I had this kit, and I've read up a little bit today about this, and it turns out the Americans bought these, I bought a few of them, along with some Kawasaki motorcycles, and they were used by the Ranger Special Operations team, crew, guys, whatever they are. Um, and from what I can gather, these actually existed before any of our Wolfs or Wimmicks or anything like that. So this actual Land Rover is pretty much based on a standard, you know, customer available 110 Land Rover with modifications to militarize it. One of the things you can see here, it's got this vent on the side, the, the, the vent on the side of the wing. That's what gives it away. It's also got the standard plastic grill and the plastic headlamp surrounds, even though it's got North American spec side lights and indicators. So we can see that it's very much based on a pretty much standard vehicle. That being the case, it will have an aluminium bonnet. So the spare wheel on the bonnet could well be correct. So I've actually seen a couple of pictures on Google of these things in America with the spare wheel on the bonnet. Now, as we know, the British Army didn't do that because as far as I'm led to believe, the bonnets on the Wolfs and the Wimmicks and the, the British uh, Land Rovers were fiberglass, so they weren't strong enough to support a spare wheel. That's what I think. If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments below. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that know these things inside out. I, I do actually have a Land Rover Defender myself. I am a petrol head, as you know. Well, in this case, I guess, I guess I'm a diesel head. I've got a 2011 um, 90 short wheelbase van and uh, I bought it brand new back in 2011 and it's now got 16,000 miles on it and I've been the uh, only owner since new and it's never been off road it's loved and cherished. So there we go this is the um, this is the RSOV with Mark 19 grenade launcher but this isn't the review I'm going to do today. Next kit down here, we've got a Defender XD Wolf Wimmick, which is with, it says it on the side here, I can never remember it, a weapons mount installation kit. Okay, so that's what this one is known as. Again, this is a, um, a long wheelbase, but has no rear side access. If you see on this one, you've got the rear door access. These were actually, although they look like Land Rovers, they're not. Um, there's a lot of additional stuff. The chassis is is much much stiffer um, there's a lot of additional equipment it's got the militarized front end as you can see we've got a different grill we've got different surrounds you've got the light guards on there you've got these um, air intakes on the side um, the bulkhead is actually cut about um, the whole thing is very very different then you can actually go on from this and you get the the actual top of the range jobby this box is quite dusty actually you get the top of the range jobby with the aluminium wheels and everything um, I actually do have resin wheels for that so you could build this into the the proper version now this one's showing the spare wheel on the bonnet they never had the spare wheel on the bonnet the, the spare wheel would have been mounted on the side but much where these um where these uh, plates are so you've got the gun mount on there as far as accuracy goes, I'm not sure. I'm sure somebody's going to come on and tell me all about this kit. 
Um, I remember when it came out, there was a load of people very, very disappointed about accuracy issues with it. But as far as I'm concerned, when it's built, it looks very much like a Wemic, as long as you don't put the spare wheel on the bonnet. This is the kit we're going to review today. This is the 90, sorry, the Defender 110 hardtop. And again, this is sort of a cross between the two. It's a army vehicle, um, which was built specifically for the army. It's got, as you can see, it's got the fiberglass roof because it would have had an integral roll cage or internal roll cage, which I don't think is included in the kit. But we have gone back to the plastic style grill. We've got the pretty much standard bumper, but with the toe and eye in the middle, which you don't get on the um, on the road versions. Pretty much standard wheel arches. We've got the standard steel wheels, although they're probably wolf wheels, which are slightly wider and thicker material, I believe. Um, but again, they're showing a spare wheel mount here, but the spare wheel would never have been put on the bonnet because I believe they're fiberglass. The spare wheel actually goes on the side. And as we can see on the side of the box here, that's where they're showing it. It's actually um, bolted to a bracket, which is welded to the roll cage and comes through the side. And you could have the spare wheel on either side because the bracket goes on either side. So we've got some information there. I'll show you, you can zoom in and have a read of that. So this one, the kit number is 82448. We've got some photo etch parts in there and we've got another um, another sample there of the, the colours that are involved. So what I'm going to do, again this box is dusty, what I'm going to do is change the lighting, get this box open and we'll have a look at what's inside. Okay, so now you can see the reason why I actually um, had the light on the side because whatever I do, the, the reflection of the light is awful. So let's have a look inside. It's a fairly slim little box, it's not nothing uh, massive. I think these are available these days for about 25 quid. Um, and really for the little model that you end up with it's it's well well worth it because it does look like I've seen a few of these built up and they do look really nice um, even if they are inaccurate but it looks like a bloody Land Rover to me so there we go we've got a bag here which is a little sprue with our front fenders in and then we've got another bag there with a the roof we've got the rear panel rear side panels on the floor and then we've got our gearbox and axles and everything chassis clear parts we've got some nice glazing there so that's all cool and then we got our decals photo etch rubber tires or vinyl tires a you can see I've never opened this <laughs> we can see here August 2011 I can't believe I've had this for eight years and there's the Yongxi that I reviewed a few uh, a couple of months ago and there's the 70 second scale door that I bought also a few months ago and I've also built a 30 second scale Spitfire it wasn't the uh, trop version, but it was um, it was a 30 second scale Spitfire. And then there's the uh, 148 scale F14 Tomcat. And I'm sure you uh, know, since that came out, the uh, Tamiya one came along and blitzed it. So um, here we go. We've got the uh, colour callouts there. So we've got two simple versions. We've got this, the plain sandy colour one, and then we've got the green and, and sandy camouflage. No reason why you couldn't do this in your, your plain matte green because um, that's what colour most of them are when they're based in the UK. And then we've got an instruction manual here, which is basically A4 page, uh, A4 size should I say, 12 pages. And there we go. So going straight into the instruction manual. Let's have a look. We've got our uh, nice image on the front there. There's no history or anything on here, but it's um, just all about the... Uh, the health and safety and everything, the legend they use, and it's telling you how to apply decals, which I should probably read. Um, so, right, sprue call out here, and the parts are numbered, which is cool. And then we've got our tires, decals, and everything there, so you can see it's all nice. This is a very detailed kit, it's a lovely little model. We've got a fully detailed engine. Um, this is actually um, a TDI 300, and it's a uh, it's a, a nice little engine. Um, I think it has some issues, but other than that, it, it, there's nothing too much wrong with it. Um, it the the colour callout is wrong. The engine should be like a Russian interior green for the. Um, it's like a um, like a, a, a pale greeny blue colour. Have a look up Army. Land Rover engines and you'll see what I mean. The engines they paint in the military, they've been pretty much the same colour for many, many years. It's very much like this Vallejo colour. The uh, Vallejo mask, should I say. 
So we've got a chassis here and we're assembling the two halves together and then putting in the cross members. Something I will say, if you put plenty of glue in there and give it a good squeeze, let it go off so it's sort of sticky and then just rub your finger over it because the actual chassis would have had a um, a, bead, a weld bead running all the way around it. Unless, of course, these were special chassis that were built with a you know, four piece box section, but I think they would have been the same as the standard chassis with a big weld bead all down the middle. Certainly the RSOV version would have been, and probably this one too. So we got the chassis going together there. Then we're going to build up our axles, differentials. We got the um, very, very strong rear axle there. Uh, they had issues with these rear axles breaking in um, in army use, apparently. So we've got the axles going in there and then we've got a transfer box in the centre. And then we've got our trailing and leading links there, adding in the steering arms and the um, the front uh, panard rod for the for the front axle. We should have a, no, we don't have a panard rod on the back. We've got the triangular member there in the in the top of the chassis. Then we've got the engine and radiator and everything going in, adding in some outriggers. Now I believe this chassis should have had another set of outriggers, but uh, maybe that's them. I can't remember now. Um, then we've got the exhaust system going together. That's going to look lovely. Bit of a bash plate on the front there, adding on the front bumper, which is made up of two parts. You'll get that nice hollow look inside. Rear panel, adding in the little bumperettes, um, lights and everything there. Then we're getting into the, um, this is the bulkhead behind the seats. And then we've got these covers going over these cubby holes in the side. And then adding the side rear panels onto the floor. Dropping in the fuel tank in the back end there. Adding in the seats. Got some interior detail panels going in there, and then we've got some rear seats going in. There's the full roll cage that I was talking about. Um, I believe on later models they actually brought the roll cage forward to protect the drivers as well. And that's all going on to the chassis. Bulkheads going on, uh, adding the windscreen into the windscreen frame. Then we've got the bulkhead here going together. Sorry, we're building the bulkhead up and there's the bulkhead there. So we've got the bulkhead here on the internal side. So we've got pedals, it's right hand drive, dashboard going in, steering wheel and everything going in, some uh, instrumentation there. And then on the other side, we've got the box there um, for, I can't think what that would have been for. And we've got the brake master cylinder going in there. Um, quite, don't quite know why it's on that side. Oh, the bulkhead is upside down, that's why. So this would have been the heater box. We've got here, we've got the, I'm not sure this would have had a heater actually. Do your research. Fiberglass one piece top going on. And then we've got the doors here with the glazing going in the upper half. Rear door there going in. So that's all very nice. And then we're adding on the doors on the other side. We've got this aerial going on the side here. Then we're building up the front fenders and we've got the inner fender and the outer fender going together. It's telling us to drill some holes. We've got this air intake bit going on there. It's telling it's optional. I don't know why it's optional. It's, um, it's on every Land Rover I've seen in the military, unless I'm uh, mistaken. And then we've got our, that's gonna be our coolant bottle there. Um, we've got our water header tank there. So we've got plenty of underbonnet detail. You've got an axe head there, there's a radio antenna box there, front grill going on. You've even got the little Land Rover badge going in there by the look of it. And then we've got the light guards going over and they're made of PE, so they're going to look pretty cool. And then we've got the tyres going on and there's the spare wheel mounting there going into the side of the cab. What I didn't notice, did the roll cage have the mounting plate for the spare wheel? No, it's got the bracket there, and it's that bracket that the plate mat bolts to that the spare wheel hangs off of. So there we go. So all in all, lovely little kit. Let me get some bags open, and then we'll start looking at some plastic. Okay, so we'll start with our uh, decals. We'll work from the bottom of the box up. And um, we've got a nice little decal sheet here. Um, being Hobby Boss, I'm not quite sure how they'll go down. But you can see we've got the, the chevrons there. We've got some number plates. And a dashboard, uh, Union Jacks, some warning signs for under the bonnet I'm guessing, um, not sure what number three is, and then we've got some um, more number plates there for the for the front and the rear. So there we go, there's a choice of number plates you've got, 
so that's your decals clear parts uh, I'm not going to get these out of the bag because I don't want them to slip out and get scratched but um, you know just generally very nice just like a Land Rover very flat clear windows um, my Land Rover's actually got a great big chip in the windscreen I'm not sure if it's going to pass this next MOT I was looking today I couldn't believe my eyes a replacement windscreen for a Land Rover Defender is just over 40 quid I couldn't believe my eyes 40 pounds <laughs> it's absolutely crazy um, so there we go uh, we've got some clear lenses in there and some little side lights and indicators there and we've got a headlight lenses there um, headlight lenses should have some pattern on them they shouldn't just be clear like that uh, tires obviously we've got our five tires in here um, fairly sort of simple tread pattern on them but they are nicely molded and you can see there is a bit of a seam in there but vinyl tires always have that you might want to change them for resin most people do little sprue here with our front fenders in and we can see we've got some nice detail on the top faces there got the radio mounting um, flanges there and we've got the uh, air intakes um, one side is for the heater one side is blanked off certainly is on mine anyway um, photo etch no point in getting that it's just a couple of grills that have to be bent around these are the headlight protectors and then we get into our main sprues so here we can see let's get this um, protection off so here we can see we've got the this is sprue A and we've got the um, the main chassis rail halves here nice they've molded them in halves rather than have dirty great ejector pin marks down one side so that's the nice thank you Bobby Boss uh, it looks like we've got some wheel, rim, wheel rims there we've got some springs with their chassis spring mounts here um, water tanks um, master cylinder by the look of it looks like radiator hoses that's that big mount for the spare wheel which you shouldn't be using the fan we've got that rear center beam for the axle then we've got our leading and, and trailing arms there and the front ones here which are very nice gear stick um, looks like chassis components cross members and stuff there but all very very nice indeed there's more um, springs with the uh, shock absorber tower there looks like part of the um, that's either going to be air filter or exhaust it's probably air filter so yeah give you a close-up on this so you can see the detail um, there's not really much detail on the chassis because it's an all welded structure so you won't have bolt and rivet detail everywhere but um, you know they're there you've got the exhaust here with a hollowed out end you could thin that out and make that a bit more realistic let's just say other, other bits and pieces you've got the water tanks there there's the fan for the engine springs all very nice indeed very crisp no flash um, I do like Hobby Boss they're one of my favorite manufacturers I must be honest um, and I particularly love this this tan plastic they use it's, it's so lovely to work with the next sprue here we've got sprue B funnily enough so once again we'll cut this off wherever the join is so the other thing I love with these Asian manufacturers they um they protect their kits they package them so well when you look at the likes of sort of Revell and Airfix and stuff and they just put everything in one bag and chuck it in a box you know and these manufacturers from from China and Korea they take so much care with their packaging um, you know it's, it's, it's a shame that Airfix and Revell don't sort of jump on board um, so there we go we've got the engine blocks there we've got axle halves here which is very nice transmission halves there uh, fuel tank bonnet or hood if you're in the States that looks to me like the turbo so I'm guessing we've got some prop shafts there we've got a rocker cover intercooler there by the look of it and then we've got our seats with the nice molded on detail not sure these seats are correct then we've got the front panel there um, I'm looking for the radiator grill I'm guessing that's going to be a lovely little piece of molding but I'm thinking it should be a piece of photo actually really. but uh, there we go we've got the steering wheel there with the oval in the center for the Land Rover badge all very nice indeed give you another close-up look on all that as I said I think there's some accuracy issues with the engine but um, 
you know, for a 20 quid. It's a, it's a great little kit. So there we go, that's that one. So we'll bag this back up. And we've got the protection off. We need to make sure we give the sprues all the protection we can in their little bags. Why won't it go in? Come on. It's caught on there. There we go. And then our third sprue. Uh, this is the... I did open this. Where is the open? There it is. The knife is extremely blunt. It won't even cut through plastic. <laughs> So here we go, this is the third sprue, this is sprue, funny enough, this is sprue C. Um, so once again, we've got lovely wheel detail here on the wolf wheels. Um, we've got the interior floor detail there. That's not like a standard Land Rover at all. Um, we've got the sides here with the cubby holes in them. And there's our dashboard, which is the typical old sort of pre-Puma dashboard front bumper there, we've got the covers there that go over those cubby holes, um, the air intakes on the sides and then we've got some tooling here, some shovels, there's an axe head by the look of it, oh no it's not, that's two parts, that's one of the transfer lever, transfer box levers, um, yeah very nice indeed, that's the rear bulkhead, that's the bit that goes here behind the seats, so yeah very crisp, very nicely moulded, um, we've got the dash panel there with just the markings on it, so you, you have to use your decal to get your gauges. But no, very nice indeed. Um, some ejector pin marks under here, but you know, unless you actually pick it up and look underneath, you're not going to see them. But yeah, I'll give you a close up detail. The detail on the sides there is very sharp, very crisp. The wheel detail is lovely. Very nice indeed. For those who's on a budget, brilliant little kit. Because I can tell you when it's built, it looks stunning. And here's our final sprue for this review. And I'm not a poet. So we've got our doors here with the old style pull-up handles. These days Land Rovers all have the, the push thumb thumb push type. Um, rear door still has the old type handle on even today. Well, even up to they finished in 2016. We've got our rear seats here, part of the roll cage, here's the rest of the roll cage there. There's the front grille going on, so that's all very nice. Um, windscreen, there's the roof. Got some ejector palm, pin marks inside there, but we're not going to worry about that too much. And then we've got the front bulkhead, or not the front bulkhead, the bulkhead. And that's got its foot wells in it, we've got some, this is the engine bay side, and you've got those flaps there that open up the vents. Um, and we've got the, the foot wells there and then on the inside we've also got the foot wells and we've got some bolt detail in there too so that's all very nice. Um, unfortunately we've got some ejector pin marks on the inside of the door so if you're going to model it with the doors open you'll have to deal with them. And then we've got, I'm um, not quite sure what they are there. I'm guessing they're going to be parts of the chassis. And then we've got these interior trim panels there that go in down the sides on the inside. But that front grille is very nicely moulded indeed. So I'll give you a close up look at this. There's your ejector pin marks you've got to deal with on the doors. But you know that's nothing too much. And then we've got the outside of the doors there which are lovely. We've got our rear seats, roll cage. The roof there with the ribbing on the top. Windscreen with integral windscreen wipers there. Roll cage, front bulkhead, I have to say it's the inside of the bulkhead there you can see. There's the rear panel with the number plate light there, rear cross member with the towing eye going in there. Must be very high up because on my Land Rover the, the actual tow bar is, is hanging down below the cross member. Yeah, all well, very nice indeed. There's the spare wheel. Lovely. So there we go guys, that has been the Land Rover Defender 110 hardtop from Hobby Boss. Um, as I say, accuracy aside, lovely, lovely little kits. 
Um, if you do get this and build it, don't put that bracket on the front. I don't think that's supposed to be on there. Um, the tyres are pretty accurate. The wheels look great. All of the chassis and everything all looks okay to me. You know, as I say, build it. It looks like a Land Rover. Everyone's going to say it's a Land Rover. And, you know, your rivet counters might say, oh, that bit's wrong or that bit's wrong. Just don't put the spare wheel on the bonnet. That's the biggest one. Okay, so thanks for watching this. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. I want to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. We're um, belting up to the 6,000 mark now, which is amazing in the short time we've been doing this. I want to say thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you to all the people who've donated to the channel on Patreon and PayPal. Um, all the money's going into a pot for, for a new camera. And then we're going to get some new lighting as well and sort of turn this channel into something else. So, um, as I say, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Looking forward to your comments below. I'm sure there's many of you out there, particularly in uh, Great Britain, that know this kit inside out and know of its um, where it's all wrong and everything. But as far as I'm aware, there's nothing there that's a real breaker that's going to be, you know, it's not like it's got a totally inaccurate front end or the, the actual whole thing is, is like 30 second scale or something like that. I think it's just a few sort of issues you need to know about. Um, I probably will build this. And here's one for you. If I do build this, I'm going to convert it to a short wheelbase. Because nobody made a plastic injection kit of a short wheelbase 35th scale Land Rover. So I'm going to, if I do build this, I'm going to convert it into a short wheelbase. I've got my, my Land Rover to measure off. So accuracy and that and, you know, suspension dimensions and that will all be absolutely perfect. But it's just going to be a case of chopping the chassis off behind the transfer box and bringing that in um, cutting the the roof off um, probably easiest to do it straight down the middle straight down here probably cut the roof straight down there make sure we get the light um, and then we need to shorten this area here um, shorten this area here because the actual rear overhang on a 90 is less so we have to cut the chassis cut the chassis cut the body cut the body cut the roof and then it'll all just come in and it will be a short wheelbase. We'll have to fill in these cubby holes and also on the other side, even though a road version has got the fuel tank filler on the rear here, the, the actual army version has it in the middle. But the spare wheel mount and everything is the same. Everything from the back of the doors forward is the same. So it um, should be quite an interesting little project. Watch this space, you might see it get built online. Bye for now and thanks for watching.